On JC Direct this week, multi-choice above the 105 Rand Canal Plus offer. We Buy Cars is coming to market. We've got details. Pick and pay chart is looking good. Inflation, it ain't over just yet. Hello and welcome to JC Direct, episode 574 for 15 February. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by JustOneLap.com. So, bunch there today, but let's start off with this pick and pay chart. I got to say, I am quite liking it. Uh, I did a TikTok on it and it went absolutely crazy. I know, TikTok, weird stuff. 150,000 views. Weirdly, it wasn't about the pick and pay investment it was around how people don't like pick and pay but this chart daily chart looking quite strong we've had that resistance zone it's around the 26 ish maybe it's up as high as yeah 2670 at the top end it ran into that last week kind of touched the top of it pulled back a bit we could even go sub 25 that certainly is possible uh, but this chart is telling you you've got higher highs you've got higher lows you've got that horizontal resistance uh, easy first target is 30 bucks to fill the gap and then we start to see the pick and pay story i've spoken about often there is certainly potential there sean summers is trying to turn it around it's not going to be easy if anyone can he can ShopRite's been eating their lunch, which is going to make it only harder. But I think he's the right person. He's going to streamline a lot. He's going to get rid of some brands, I suspect. The question is, do they need a rights issue? I don't think they do need a rights issue, uh, but that is possible. And that would spook the market. That would absolutely spook the market. But for now, folks are saying, you know what? It's cool. We're happy with that. Let's see how it plays. And that's where we're going to see for now. Pick and pay. I have started to build a position. I'm going to carry on going with a little bit more. But at this point in time, I'm thinking we might see a little more weakness. If I quickly pull up the price here today. So we're down 1.7%, 25 30 as I'm recording this afternoon uh, certainly is coming back a bit. I'm keeping a very, very close eye on that. The other big story this past week was transaction capital. Now, we know that transaction capital are planning to list we buy cars. They had told us that a couple of weeks ago. The unbundling process that will probably happen in March. We haven't got final dates that will come with the circular. They get to a valuation of it of about seven and a half billion rand. Now, how they've got that valuation is really quite simple. What they're saying is, well, Coronation's taken a stake and therefore the seven and a half billion. Uh, fair enough. The point is, well, ultimately, the market will decide what the true valuation really, really is. But what we do have here is an interesting play out on the chart. Again, since the collapse uh, on the weekly chart, what the 810 or so level was important. We've pushed higher than that on a number of occasions. As I'm recording this, 850 is now the level. You will get pro rata shares for whatever transaction capital you hold. The valuation of transaction capital, all things equal, as I said, 7.5 billion. Ultimately, the market will decide if that is the true valuation or not. But what we also got uh, was two important pieces of information, two pieces of information that I thought were important. The first was that there is a put which the founders and sellers of, uh, of We Buy Cars uh, had on transaction capital. That falls away. They could essentially go to transaction capital and say, here's the rest of our shares, please pay us. And because of the current share price, it would be dilutory of a humongous scale. That's now off the table. That's not to worry at all. The key point is to that seven and a half billion current market cap transaction capital, six and a half billion. Now, there are a lot of if, buts, and maybes, but transaction capital has had a really, really good uh, January. 14,000 cars sold in January. That is a record for transaction capital uh, in terms of 14,000. And that's not because we're suddenly seeing everyone rushing out there and wanting to, to buy some uh, 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 motor cars or secondhand cars. No, not at all. That's simply because I suspect they're starting to pick up market share from the mom and pops. That's where they're finding the business. That's where they're really getting things interesting. And I think 14,000 is a big number. I, I've been tracking. If you go to We Sell Cars, you do a search, but don't put any parameter in. So it just tells you what is their stock level. 
And I've got to say, just looking at that, it certainly did seem that they were having they were having a decent period. Things were looking fairly decent for them. And uh, certainly that trading update said yes. I've got to say, all things equal. So let's say, forget 7.5 billion, let's take 6.5 billion. It means that basically you're going to get the value of, of, of we buy cars equals transaction capital. You've still got SA Taxi, not an exciting business right now. Uh, and and you know, what was hurting SA Taxi? What was hurting them was, well, consumer under the cosh. Still the case, or maybe a little bit less. Inflation's down a bit. Uh, we'll start seeing interest rates coming down. We've had, a, what, 700,000 people into employment uh, last year. That'll undoubtedly help as well. I know it's pandemic base effect, but it's people who are now using a taxi who weren't a year before that. It's, okay, so that's a little bit better. But the toughness is still tough out there. What I mean by the toughness? Well, the really, really tough part, quite simply, is it's just really hard being a taxi driver at the moment. I was out in the streets of Joburg on Saturday morning. We had stage six load shedding, and you're getting caught in robots. And so are the taxis. I know, they will try and angle the way through it. But their trips are taking longer because of load shedding, costing more because of petrol whilst you're driving and you do less per day because they take longer. But then the third part of the business there is Newton. Newton is looking fairly good. So I think there's certainly some some opportunity there. I, I, I think there is. At, at 8.50, uh, we'll get some more details in terms of exact timelines, but I think it's looking not too bad. I'm going to talk inflation in a moment, but one of the weird things was Tuesday we got U.S. inflation, Wednesday we got U.K. inflation, and what did we also get? Gold, weaker. Gold heading down to $2,000 an ounce, or just a little bit above it. Uh, on this chart, this is Quaifer and actually has it below 2000 This is my gold chart I've been watching for a while. You can see the sort of 1650 at the bottom. You can see the 2000 to 2100 at top. We certainly are gonna, we're getting some weakness. Levels that matter, 1980, uh, 1940. I think we might even get back to that 1940. At that point, I'm not terribly stressed. I'm holding Anglo Gold Ashanti. We'll see how that plays out. So gold is not giving me gray hairs at this point of time. But we certainly, as I say, we are seeing weakness in the gold price, which was which was a bit of a surprise after that inflation data. You would have thought the inflation data would have, I don't know, sent the gold bulls absolutely getting all excited and, and, and running. Multi-choice is suddenly getting all shades of interesting. I spoke last week and I said quite simply that uh, the folks uh, at uh, multi-choice had lost the battle. And, and, and I thought that was a fair shout. Uh, Canal Plus either have to up their price or something. They haven't yet upped their price, but the market is saying they are coming and they will be upping their price. Uh, traded as high as 108 rand 61 cents Wednesday morning. Okay, it's now down at 104.63, but that offer price is 105. Remember when that cents broke on the Thursday morning, stock only went to about 93. What the, what the market is saying here is that Canal Plus is coming back, and I agree, they have to, mandatory offer, and it's not going to be at 105. It's going to be at a better price. What is that better price? 120, 135, 100, I mean, do we want to make a new all-time high, which means we need to get, call it 160? Mm, I'm not sure about 160 necessarily, but certainly the market is confident that the Canal Plus is coming back. I agree with that assessment. I just don't know what price. The market is saying, look, if they did about a 15-ish percent discount, was it 15? No, maybe it was a 12% discount on the 105. A 12% discount at this point now about 120, uh, quickly running the head in my math, uh, low 120s is what the market is pricing right now. If it comes in higher than that, then we will see a pop happening here as well. So certainly, as I say, market is saying they are back. They are back. They have to make a mandatory offer. We know that. That is not the surprise at all. Uh, we expect that to come uh, soon enough. Uh, and then we have seen massive RAND weakness. Now, Bunch of folks would tell you, yeah, yeah, this is ahead of the uh, what we're seeing next week, which is budget. It's going to be a horror budget. Don't disagree with that in the least. But there's actually a bigger story here. And that bigger story is that we are seeing dollar strength. 
And I think part of that dollar strength was that inflation number that we saw. But the dollar strength is absolutely running. The DX, DXY trading at 104.87. Again, we went back into that uh, support zone at just above 100. It looked like we were going to sort of move below that. See some dollar weakness, some strength in the crosses pretty much across all of them. Instead, what we have had is this is now run up from those lows of just above 100 to just under 105. Some chunky resistance just ahead, sort of 105.2 all the way to 107. The, what is this telling us? Money is flowing into the U.S. Why is money flowing into the U.S.? Fear. More than anything, fear. I mean, I'm not sure. Let me quickly have a peek what our RAND is trading at. But what we've got is a market that is, is generally spooked and saying, hang on a second. So RAND is 1907. It actually hit 1919 earlier this morning. So it's pulled back a fair bit. But uh, we certainly are seeing the market saying, and I say the market, the global market saying, you know what? We don't really want to get too involved in this whole idea of, uh, how do we call it, um, worries about inflation. So let's talk inflation. We had U.S. inflation out yesterday. Broadly, not as good as expected, but not a horror show. But the market didn't buy that at all. Expected was 4.2, uh, and uh, sorry, the UK was 4.2. Uh, sorry, expected, uh, expected for the UK was 4.2 versus 4, and it came in at 4. In the US, we got inflation coming down, but not down to the 2 point something that was expected, sub 3%, and core inflation month on month ticked higher. What that means is that the March rate cut, which just Three weeks ago, the market was pricing in a 60 or 70 odd percent chance is off the table. That is just not happening. No chance. Now, I didn't ever think it was, although I take the caveat there. If inflation is beaten, if inflation is really done, well, then cut early, cut fast. But is it really done? I was surprised at the speed at which it came down last year. And I know some of it was base effect. I know I was saying that our mid-year inflation local numbers would look really good because we'd hit the 7% highs a year before. What's the best killer of inflation? Is inflation in your past because of base effect? Absolutely get that. But now what we're seeing is that last little sticky bit. We've seen it with our local inflation. We get into the target, the, the sub-6%. We start heading for 45 and then we rise up, and we just can't get it down. And we're seeing this, the same in the U.S. Now, the question on the minds of central bankers is, is it beaten? And, and the argument is, I think we can say with a fair degree of certainty that, yes, inflation is beaten. The question then comes, but when does it get back to target? And that is worrying central bankers and hence markets. So in December, Jerome Powell, after the FOMC meeting, was fairly sanguine and pretty much saying, yeah, cuts next year, no problem, four of them, everything's lacquer. He went off script, in other words. He went back onto script for the January meeting. March meeting, there is absolutely no cut. Then there's a 30 April, 1 May meeting. I don't think they're going to cut there either. And it's not that I'm worried about rampant inflation, and I don't think anyone else is particularly worried about rampant inflation. But what we are worried about, and I say we, I mean the central bankers the world over, is getting back to target. And that last little bit is really hard and really sticky. And in the U.S., with unemployment at 3.7%, where's the, the compelling reason? If, inf if unemployment was 6%, then, then labor's got no pricing power, companies are being squeezed. Yes, I hear you, absolutely. But at 3.7%, there's still pricing power for, for labor. And they're going to say to, to someone, you know, give me an increase, an extra dollar an hour, or I'm going to the burger shack down the road because they'll give me that dollar per hour. And you've got to pay it because of that very, very tight labor market. That, I think, is going to, what's going to, more than perhaps anything, give Jerome Powell the wiggle room to say, we're not convinced yet by the numbers. We like it. It's kind of going the right way, but we're not yet at that 2%. And this is going to, it is spooky markets. It spooked markets on uh, when, Tuesday evening uh, after the inflation data came out, 3.30 our time just ahead of the U.S. Open, 8.30 in New York. And it spooked the markets. And they're saying, yo, because remember all of that talk around 
uh, March cuts and by the end of the year we've had, I don't know, plenty percent of cuts. And suddenly you've got to refigure all of this and say, hang on, this might not actually happen as planned. Yes, we will get cuts. Yes, inflation is pretty much done. But it's not yet to that point where we're going to start seeing an acceleration of cuts. Interestingly, as I said, Standard Bank Chief Economist is saying locally we will see 1% of cuts uh, over the course of the year. If we start in the July, September, uh, uh, yeah, maybe, I mean, uh, which means we actually got to start before July, May, July, uh, September, November. So if we're going to do quarter at each, we'd have to start at the May meeting, which is quite soon. However, it doesn't have to be quarter percent, not locally. Certainly not in the U.S. Jerome Powell and his team could suddenly wake up one day and decide that they need to cut rates and they could cut it half a percent. Heck, 75 basis points. I'm not sure that they will, but what they don't want to do is start cutting, then have to pause, or heaven above, have to raise again because inflation just won't go away. They need it back at that last bit. As I said, I was surprised by the speed it came down. I thought the U.S. inflation ended the year at a lower rate than I thought and got to the sub-4% way sooner than I thought. But that last couple of percentage points, that's where we've got the real challenge. That is proving hard, and so far, mm, it's going to be sticky. We'll leave it there for today. Uh, as always, my name is Simon. If you uh, like this, enjoy this podcast and you're watching it right to the end, uh, let us know in your local podcatcher. Leave us a review. All things equal. This should also be on our YouTube channel under Just One Lap. You can go watch it there. We're trying that because some folks prefer their podcasts on YouTube. It'll have captions and everything, some screenshots and everything. But if you're currently doing it audio only, no change. No change whatsoever. We're doing YouTube as an add-on. As always, look after yourself. And if you can, look after somebody else. We'll chat again next week. Cheers all.